Reformed Church. Let's just break, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't mind starting the message, but let's just make sure, and let's just pray. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you, Prince of Peace. Thank you for your word to us, Lord, the things you've spoken to us. Thank you for the fulfillment of those words. Thank you, Father, for the, the hope that you've given us of the expectation of seeing the things that you've spoken to us come to pass. I thank you so much, Father, for faith and for hope and for love. I thank you for faith, which is understanding what we currently have in you, Jesus, seeing what's already finished, seeing what's already done, that we can have a spiritual perception to see what we have, what we currently have, Lord, in you. Father, I thank you for hope, which is the expectation of all those things that we were seeing by faith. It's the expectation of seeing those things manifest in our life. We hope for what we don't yet see, is what Romans 8 says. That means we are only hoping to see manifest the things Jesus has already done. So faith is a spiritual perception of what is. Hope is an expectation of the, those very things manifesting in our life. And I thank you so much, Father, because we believe and see everything that you have done for us, Jesus, that produces a love in us to spread that gospel to other people as well so that belief can be born in their heart and hope can be born in their heart as well. Thank you so much for faith and for hope and for love. Thank you so much, Jesus, for those things. And, 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 and Father, it's not just faith that we have. It's not just a spiritual perception of seeing what we have in the Spirit. Father, if, if we only saw what we had in the Spirit, we would become discouraged for lack of expectation of ever seeing that manifested. So we don't just have faith, Lord. And it's not about just an expectation, Lord. It's not about just expecting something in the future, Lord. Not realizing that the very things that we're expecting for the future are things that we already have. People that expect for the future, Lord, uh, solely, they don't realize that they already have everything in you. But it's faith and it's hope. It's seeing that I already have it, which is faith, and expecting that these things will manifest and I will see them tangibly in my life, in my body, in my family, wherever it needs, in my finances, wherever it needs to be, in my actions, in my habits, in my mind, in my emotions. I expect to see the things I'm learning about in my life. It's faith and it's hope. And I thank you so much, Father, for the love you put in our hearts to spread those things to other people as well. Thank you, Lord, speaking the truth in love and spreading that beyond just our own heart. Thank you so much, Lord. We love you so much, Jesus. We thank you so much, Father, for the care that you have taken for us already. Thank you for the ministry, Lord, that you've put Pastor Jose in charge of here. Thank you so much, Lord, for that ministry. Thank you so much, Lord. 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 Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you for faith and hope and love, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For the opportunity to hear your truth, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity tonight to hear your truth, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Father. Too many people don't know the things that we know here, Lord, and we want them to know it. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jesus. We are excited, Lord, over the things we're learning, and we're looking forward to spreading that truth to other people as well so they can feel excited as well. Thank you so much, Jesus. We're excited over the things that we're learning here. Thank you, Lord. We're rested over the things that we're learning here. We want to spread that to other people. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit. Om Brashpat Lava, Sput Lavakino, Saspit Lavostia, Zambat Lavangia. 
epica balt, la toshan zapla, shambeku la gangrat, sembu jumum, ba frafu shabaku la jinakisto. I got a preparation in place. Hepotnia vanchu abla ku shambaka la shina, shabuka la shindambu, prafusta gabala krandia. I've got a preparation in place. Home aborna munstaidan. Apokuna id, hei bolambuna, sebula kaid, ish, haish oma laiden, izikial, sodian evil, fed laindos pachud aid, haprombo shabokula chaniguskats, haguskats, aguskats amunji ala pak laindon. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. A movement coming from the Spirit. It's a movement coming from the Spirit. And I've already got a preparation in place for you. I've already prepared the place for you. I promise you, I've got a preparation in place. I've got it all laid out for you, people. I've got it all laid out for you. So peace now in Jesus' name. I've got it all laid out for you. I've got it all laid out for you. The endeavor you're taking on, I've got it all laid out for you. I'm promising you that. Abrahamson says, I've got it all laid out for you. It's not a worldly preparation. It's a, it's a movement of my spirit. It's a... It's a movement of my spirit. Hendi kolashnia la pulta fala granun. Le granu habula kush. Shipukulanjina kalagrafda. Thank you, Jesus. Atul ishmulan. Shimula kulaind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Econiash malablata hablata hablata sabulani. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kula shamandu kalabrata shalegrat mina sogula kandina kadasta. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the word. Of my mouth. Thank you, Jesus. For the word. Of my mouth. Thank you for the word in his mouth. Thank you for the word in our mouth. Thank you for the platform for people to hear it. Thank you for the raised platform for people to be able to hear it. Thank you for no more ignorance of that word. Whether they accept it or reject it, they'll know it. Whether they accept it or reject it, they'll be aware of it. Thank you for no more ignorance of this word where it is, how to find it. Thank you for the platform for people to hear it. Thank you for the raising of the platform for people to be able to hear it. Thank you for number one. Thank you for number one.
Thank you, Jesus, for number one. The number one Thank you for number one, Jesus. This church, Jesus, thank you for making it the number one heard church. Thank you, Jesus. The number one heard church, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, the most commonly heard church, Jesus. Thank you for making it the most popularly heard church. Even if they don't accept it, they're going to know it. It will be available. The number one most commonly heard church. Thank you, Jesus, for the mm. thank you, Jesus, mm. for the mm. Thank you, Jesus, for the the pol the politicians. Thank you, Jesus, for the politicians, the mayor, the governor, the president. Thank you for the mayor the governor, the president. Thank you, Jesus, for the influence this church has with politicians. Thank you, Jesus, for the turning of things around politically. Thank you, Jesus, for the influence this church has with politicians. Thank you for the mayor, the governor, the president. We have influence with Jesus. Thank you for the turning of things around in the right direction, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for turning things around in the right direction, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessing with this place we live in because of this church being here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the things in the last days that are prophesied that will have been remitted from our history. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It won't be said ever of this place, of this church, When we look back on history, I thank you, Jesus. It won't have happened in this place because this church is here. Thank you, Jesus, for the turning of things around in the right direction. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. It'll be remitted from history in regards to this place, this church. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the, for the waking up of so many people to see things they haven't seen before, which results in a produce, in a fruit that hasn't been seen before. Thank you so much, Jesus. This is not your grandfather's church. This is not your great-grandfather's church. This is not your great-great-great-great-grandfather's church. This is something different. This church is not mm -hmm, restoring truths spoken of before. It's a revelation of things that people have not known before. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's not a restoration of truth that has been around before. It is a revealing of truth that has not been spoken before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for revealing things to us, Lord about what Jesus has done, 
that people haven't spoken of before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your revealing of truth in the last days to finish what you started, Jesus. Thank you for the revealing of the truth in the last days to finish what you started, Jesus. Look, can I, everyone look up here for a second? I want to tell you something. I made this uh, model with Pastor Jose. And um, this model of the temple. And God's going to finish what he started. We're going to finish what he started. The building that he started, that we're going to finish it. See it completed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for finishing what you started a long time ago. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord, for the truth that we're hearing from you, the truth that people are going to hear from us. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. I can see somebody falling down a hill. They're falling down a hill. I can see somebody falling down a hill, um, tumbling down that hill. They came back for the second time. I see somebody falling down the hill that came back for the second time. I can see uh, someone... tumbling down the hill to, uh, to, to finish the, the, the house. Thank you, Jesus. I see somebody falling from the sky. I feel, feel like it's uh, someone falling, falling down from the sky to finish the work he started. Thank you, Jesus. I can see someone tumbling down the hill, and someone falling out of the sky to finish what Pop started. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hope and our eyes, Jesus. Open our eyes, Jesus. Two boys, boys. Thank you, Jesus. Both boys. Up in our eyes, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Up in our eyes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much, Jesus. We thank you for your, your word. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Full time. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the superabundance, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Empia da bal blat hula bal te hashia gut la idash. Mil tasha but la van frabu kula jikala blankia da jina. I got. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Instruments of righteousness. Thank you for using us as instruments of righteousness, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Jose is going to come up here and share something. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> you know, just want to um, share something with you real quick. I, I kind of thought... Um, 
that maybe this was just kind of limited maybe to just a couple people, but I, I wanted to share this with you because I think it just kind of keeps growing in my mind, right? Uh, that it's an important thing maybe, right, for all of us. But um, so one of the things that I was sharing about when we first, uh, during pre-service prayer was um, our, our own. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay. Um, um, around uh, being ridiculed or being called weak or feeble, right? And um, the people of Israel, while they were rebuilding the wall, they said they they said that they began the people began to mock them and to say, you know, what do these weak, feeble people think that they're going to accomplish, right? Um, and um, The Lord is just showing me, like, there is, like, a, the word that keeps coming into my mind is, like, a shell, right? Like, a hard shell. Like, do you, do you, um, put, like, this hard shell up? Because at some point, at some point in your life, you made a decision and you said, I'm not going to allow this to, like, take me down. I'm not going to allow this to beat me. So you put on this hard shell, right? Because you're going to, you're going to not let something knock you down. The, the problem with that, though, is that, when you put on this hard exterior or you want to put on this, um, this show of strength, right? Um, th- look how it contradicts this. In, in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, he says, Therefore I take pleasure in weaknesses. I take pleasure in infirmities. This is Paul talking about himself, right? I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches, right? In, 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 in ridicule. He says, in, in necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. In other words, people looking at you and they say, you know, you're nothing but a grasshopper, right? There's a difference between somebody looking at you and telling you that you're nothing versus you looking at yourself and telling, saying about yourself that you're a grasshopper in your own sight, that you're feeble in your own sight, that you're weak and unable, right? But when, when, you, when you sense an inability in 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 and of yourself apart from Christ, right? That that's fine, right? And it, it, we we all get to that place in our lives and got there where we said, you know what, Lord, I I need to be saved, right? But now, when you have been given the abundance of all things, whenever anything or anyone ever in your life, including just your own carnal mentality, were to were to reproach you to speak against you to tell you that you're feeble weak right he says he says he says for for when i am weak then he said am i strong for when i'm weak then am i am i strong so if you could just see you know in in instead of us um feeling especially around other believers right like that that we have to have a strong shell exterior like hard right um that those are the same several words that keep coming to my mind, right? Like hard and shell, right? Instead of it having to be like that, that we could, that the, the verse in, um, that we were just reading before was talking about how, uh, I think that was James chapter 5, like pray for one another, right? Um, but it's so difficult <laughs> to pray for one another when we don't seek each other out because we have this hard shell, right? Like I don't want to show weakness right but it, it to, to your brothers and sisters in christ that's that's that is the place where you come and you say you know what lord i just need i just need you to pray for me not not trying to pretend like 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 we don't need one another right like this is already a given we are the church and we do already need one another we are members one of another right so you don't function by yourself in the body of christ right you don't function by yourself and stand just you and Jesus, right? That's not the way his body works, right? We are members one of another, right? So, so seeking out one another, you know, there's no, there's no, um, there's no um, judgment or, you know, danger in showing vulnerability to one another. And I'm not talking about falling apart like a $2 suitcase. I'm talking about like just being able to just be truthful and say i i need somebody to pray for me um i want to pray for you right it, it, it it's 
it's this thing, this shell about, I don't want to pray for you because I don't know, I don't know, you know, if you're going to judge, you know, I've never gotten up here. I don't know. I've never prayed for anybody before. I've never prayed for you, right? Uh, I don't pray for anybody or I'm not a teacher or w whatever, you know, it, it, it's just the, however many reasons you put for you not um, giving to someone else what you have, right, or or you not being willing to receive what someone else has, whatever that hard thing is, right? The, the cool thing is you could just, that is something that you could just let go by saying, you know what, Lord, I completely need, uh, needed everything that you had to offer me, and, and now I've received all that I have, all that abundance on the inside of me, and, and the constant realization of always, like, wow, Lord, it is, I don't, I don't have to be strong by myself, right? I can just encourage myself in you, and I am strong because of what you've done and who you've made me. It, it, is, it is really all that knowledge of Christ that brings about that strength, the power of God onto our exterior, right, all those things to manifest. But, but among ourselves, though, right, and you, you, don't, you don't have to have that, that hardness, right? Like, in other words, almost like someone in the world that's been knocked down so many times and then they just make a decision that they're going to make something out of yourself, like that doesn't have to be the mentality of the church, right? You've already been made someone, right? You don't have to put on this thing like, like this is my personality. I'm going to be strong and I'm going to be hard. I'm going to show that I'm a successful individual, whatever that is, right? You, you just, you, you just, um, well, and, I, and I'll stop right there. I think that's good enough. I think that's good. Thank you, Jesus. When Pastor Dave was talking, I was thinking about the difference between, like, I don't know, just when he was saying, like, hard shell. It was kind of reminding me of, like, uh, when you, if you work with your hands, the difference between someone's hand that's actually strong versus someone's hand that just is, like, calloused, you know? Like, you've been through a lot, and you just kind of put on, you get that shell, and, you know, it's like human endurance. It's just kind of like that. It doesn't necessarily mean your hand is strong because you've got calluses. You know, it just means your hand has been through a lot. And therefore, you have learned to, you know, put this sort of facade of, of strength and endurance kind of on the outside, but even though the hand might not really be strong. And there's obviously a huge difference between being strong in the Lord and, you know, and, and you know, putting on a strong front yourself. You know what I mean? Like, a, you can recognize that you in the flesh are weak and you have nothing, and you just recognize that your strength is entirely from the Lord. And it's, it's a different, it's a different kind of strength. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a difference between showing you, yourself being strong or versus like leaning on somebody else. I don't mean leaning on your fellow believers. I mean leaning on the Lord and saying, I'm resting on the Lord. I'm resting on his strength. I'm resting on who he is, and I'm entirely dependent. And it's just a difference of mentality. Um, you know, I actually remember even the first time when uh, the Lord first showed me things even regarding transformation in my life and that I didn't have to change myself for the Lord and that I could actually, it was just like, it was a feeling. That was the way I described it was sort of the, the difference between doing something and trying to be do the right thing and, and, and be something of myself versus when I found out those things that I thought were right were still right, but it wasn't any, it was taken away from me now and it was something I could lean on him for now. As I was resting upon his power, resting upon his ability and the thing, gifts he had given me and I didn't have to be it for myself anymore, make it, make myself look like I was competent of myself, you know what I mean? It just, it's, it's, it's such a different thing, right? You try to look spiritual or you try to answer questions spiritually and you try to put on a thing and uh, that's not being strong in the Lord. You can certainly say, hey, you know what? Uh, such and such a thing is happening, and I know that Jesus already provided for it. it, it that's fine, but uh, it's not that, like Pastor Day was just describing. It's not you trying to give the appearance or trying to be self-confident or competent. Um, anyway, just, just relying on the Lord and acknowledging that you can't, you never could, but Jesus did, and you have all that on the inside of you. So. Um, all right, well, let's see. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely am not going to have time <laughs> to do a message at this point. So, um, um, well, we can continue and just kind of pray. I would assume that we'll probably just pray and see kind of what the Lord, direction the Lord wants for the rest of the service because we've probably only got about 15 minutes of, of this. Um, so why don't we do that? Let's just see what the Lord wants to do with the rest remaining of the time. And I'm not going to push it either. I mean, it, I'm not, I don't, we don't have to go along for the sake of going along. Um, we could open it up and just, that could be it as well. But I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pray. Let's just see what the Lord wants to do with the rest of the service. Thank you so much, Lord.
Thank you for your grace and for your peace, Lord, that's in this place. It was here when we walked in. We might sense something at a certain point in time, but it was here when we walked in because your grace and your peace is with us wherever we go. Thank you so much, Jesus, for that. We love you so much. We thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you for the grace and peace that's in this place. We love you. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. We've been adopted by you, and we thank you so much, Father, we're a part of your family. Thank you so much, Lord. We rely on you. We accept the help from other believers, Lord, knowing that we don't have any, um, any power of ourselves to fake. But I thank you, Lord, we accept the help from other believers, and we rely wholeheartedly on what you've done for us, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much, Jesus. All right. Thank you so much, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Um, again, unless you or anyone else had anything further to share, I, I feel like I'm fine, so. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Yeah. Anyone else have any teachers have anything? No. You? Yeah? Okay. Cool. Brother Master's going to come up and just share something re- with you real quick. Um, I don't think we've ever said we had to share something that was real long. It's always real quick, but whatever, but whatever that means. Brother Matt's going to come up and share something. Yeah, this thing stand. I don't have much, but um, but something that I've been thinking about a lot recently. I was having a conversation with the teams upstairs a couple weeks back, and um, on the one hand, it's like it's a, it's a funny thing that I find a lot of times that there is something like prideful in me when when it comes to sharing things. Um, that I need help with and with other believers and kind of saying, hey, I need, I need some help. I need some encouragement because my mind's not where it needs to be. And um, But the funny, this, this is what's funny to me is that I realize, you're like, okay, well, none of us are walking around completely glorified like Jesus. So it's, it's very clear, like we all need help. You know, so when, when, you, when you're looking yourself and you say, hey, you know, I think that I should ask for help. I should ask for, for prayer, for encouragement. Um, the other person already knows. Whether they're thinking about it or not, they say, yeah, you need help, I need help too. Um, another thing is, this is, this is something I'm growing in a lot. But my whole life, I wait for people to tell me that I need help. And uh, I, need, I need help a lot more than that. You know, we need encouragement a lot more. I'm not saying that the Lord will never speak to someone and they'll speak into your life and encourage you right where you're at, at a, in a timely manner. But you cannot depend on that. You can't rely on it. Those are powerful moments. You can remember those things. I can go back into my mind. I can think about those, those times. But um, don't count on it. You know, like, don't, don't set your mind to say, yeah, like, if I need help, I need encouragement, I need prayer, someone will seek me out. So if, you, if you need help, if you need, if you need uh, encouragement, you need guidance on something, you need some direction, you need some advice. Take advantage of the resources that are at hand. Come after service. Pastors, they pastor Mike always mention that they're here after service. That you can come up and you could you could pray with them, or they can share something with you. Take advantage of that. Take advantage of the other believers that you have around too. I know that it's it's kind of a, a common thing. You know, you you go out of the sanctuary and it's almost like okay, like now your mind is almost in a different place. Like, okay, yeah, it's, it's about, you know, like the things going on in, in my in my job, you know, school, whatever it might be. I would encourage you, don't, don't just, you know, kind of put the things that you've heard on a given Sunday or Wednesday that you have in your mind, the things the Lord is showing you and you're meditating on. Don't just put those aside. Keep those well in your heart. Share those with other people. You know, like there's... 
there's something to say that what Pastor Jose was just saying about being the body, you know, that we have like a very strange understanding of what that means practically. You know, like certain people can't minister to other people because, you know, they're teachers or whatever. And, um, man, like if, if you have something from the Lord to share with somebody, you, you have something that he's taught you, some, something that gives you joy and peace, share that with someone else. Don't, don't, don't suppress that and say, oh, well, like they probably already know it. And that, that's actually another thing that, that um, I was just sharing this with Pastor Jose a couple weeks back. We were talking, and I was saying, you know, the, the one thing that I, I so much admire in him is that if you're speaking the gospel, he's like listening. Even though you're like, if you would play it back, you're like, yeah, I probably learned it because he said it. So, like, it, it's, it, it, a lot of people are not like that. You know, myself included, there are plenty of times, you know, <laughs> I hear someone say something and you're like, yeah, like, I know, like, I, I told you that. And you can almost kind of just flip a switch and be like, yeah, I, I got that. But, um, but man, do we, need, we need to be reminded of the truth. Like I said, we're not, we're not perfect. We're not glorified um, outwardly yet. So it's, it's evident. It's very clear. We're not, we don't have to fool anybody. You don't have to put on a, you know, a front that, uh, that we have some growing to do. We have some understanding to, to, uh, to have and to learn. And, um, yeah, like I said, not a whole lot, but those are all things that, that just recently just keep coming up, and I felt like it was a good thing to share, you know, specifically that piece about not waiting for someone to seek you out if you need help, but seek them out. You, if, you, if you see someone that you trust, that their mind and their eyes are on the Lord, and that they can hear from the Lord and be able to minister to you something, whether it be, you know, a word of wisdom, whether it be healing, whether it be encouragement, whatever it is, seek them out. It's a good thing. The body that we have, the believers and the sharing of the life of God, it's a, it's a really good thing. So, Right. So I'll just close service, but um, I did just want to echo what Brother Matt was saying because it really is very true. We, we like we m- maybe I think because we think like we're the only ones that ever experience any difficulty that we sort of expect like even maybe of the elders of the church or leaders in the church you, you kind of think well oh like I'll I'll wait for them to just get like a whatever word of knowledge and then come up to me and wave their hand over me. Um, and that's just that. That's that's um, what that does is that that the, the expectation of that is you're assuming that that person just knows everything, and uh, even currently where their mind renewal is, that you know a- anything that um, that they ever say to you, you, you sort of expect a level of spiritual mindedness that you know I don't always have a word of knowledge about what someone is going through, but you know what that's why we're here. And so, like Brother Matt said, we offer this every single service pretty much about, hey, if you need something. And, and another thing he said, too, is you don't have to always need prayer for something. You could just want advice for something. That's a great thing. I just want to show you just one verse, though, just to echo what he was saying in James 5.14. It's good to, we, we need to be in contact with other believers and ask other believers to pray for us and all that. It's, it's a, that's a good thing. But it's not just other believers as well. Brother Matt just said, someone that you trust that knows the Lord, okay? Um, I, don't know, I don't know everything. Pastor Jose doesn't know everything. Um, we do in our spirit, right? But in our heads, we don't know everything. Miss Lindsay, Miss Kim, they don't, we don't know everything in our heads. And, uh, but I will say, though, there's a reason why Pastor Jose is the leader of this church and all of us are, are not. There's a reason for that. You know, you think God, like, God puts leaders in positions because maybe they know something that a lot of people don't. And this is the specific need to not just go, if you have a problem, um, I'm not saying it always has to be a leader in the church, but if a leader in the church is offering that help to you, the Bible specifically says to go to the elders of the church 
That's what it says in James 5.14. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Why the elders? Can anybody pray? Sure, anybody could pray, but isn't there a reason why God puts leaders in a church? Because maybe they know something that most people don't. Even maybe your buddy that goes to the same church as you is not the same thing as if you get a leader to pray for you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said call for the elders of the church. And it doesn't always have to be an elder of the church. We should be able to be praying for one another. But if you have an ongoing issue or you need advice on something, you know what? You can go to a trusted friend, but you also have to keep in mind that there are leaders in a church for a reason, right? So there's also that. Um, and again, the leaders in this church are not just, you know, Pastor Jose or Miss Kim or myself, but we, we have to just bear that in mind as well. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reform Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this uncommon truth out to the world. If you'd like to support this good news, you can do so at reformchurch.com slash give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reformchurch.com.